Next question is from Sebastian Ortiz. You guys talk a lot about building muscle to speed up the metabolism to make fat loss easier. However, I have heard that this doesn't matter because as you build more muscle and increase your metabolism, you just keep getting hungrier, making the fat loss just as hard compared to where you were at before. What are your thoughts on this? It's terrible advice. Yeah. Whoever, and, whoever gave that to you. Yeah. And it doesn't matter. Okay. So there's a couple things that we have to uh, clarify on. There's healthy hunger. And then there's a relationship with food where you're, you have cravings, which is very different. You can have cravings because you're stressed or because when I watch a movie, I always eat, you know, a bowl of popcorn with a lot of butter or, you know, I'm upset or, you know, I get triggered by food. I'm at a party and we all know this. How many times have we eaten foods that, you know, trigger us even though we're full? Like, oh, I'm stuffed, but oh, there's some chocolate. I'm going to go throw down that chocolate. Real hunger uh, is healthy. There's nothing wrong with real hunger. And the reason why you're hungrier in the real sense, in the healthy sense, when you build muscle is exactly because your body is fueling this muscle. It's fueling this fat burning machinery. Not only that, but you know, I know studies will show that every pound of muscle, they'll say, oh, it only burns an extra 10 calories, which still isn't trivial. You gain five pounds, it's 50 calories a day. You do the math, that equals a, a, a decent amount per year. But it's not that simple. The metabolism is super complex, and there's this range of efficiency and non-efficiency with calories. In other words, you can have a faster or slower metabolism with the same lean body mass. Building muscle through resistance training, not only are you building the muscle, but you're also telling you, especially if you feed your body, especially if you feed your body with high-quality protein and good food, you're telling your body with the resistance training that it needs it can it can't not only does it have a faster metabolism because of the muscle, but it's also being less efficient with calories, meaning more calories are being burned for heat and for other purposes. So and, and so here's I, I would love your guys' uh, you know stories on this, but I can't I can remember I don't know, countless times clients would train with me, and after about six months or eight months of consistent resistance training, they'd be like, okay, this is really weird, but. I'm eating more than ever. Mm -hmm. I'm so much hungrier than I used to be, but I'm still getting leaner. This is really weird. Like, what's going on? I'm like, well, your metabolism is roaring, but but I'm eating more. I'm so much hungrier. That's a good thing. Keep it going. Well, this is also a, a good goal, right? So this is actually when I had do this with clients. Like I'd say, listen, we're going to increase calories. Our goal is going to build muscle. I know you you hired me to lose. Uh, weight, but we're not going to get there yet. I want to speed your metabolism up. And so we're going to increase calories, try and build muscle. He said, well, how long? I said, well, I'd like to get you to place. And by the way, this is very possible for whoever's asking this question for you to get to a place where it's actually hard to obtain all those calories. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that is such a great place to then go, let's go the other way, the other direction now. So my goal, when I would tell these clients, I'd say, well, I actually want to get you to a place where you look back at me and go, Adam, I'm just having a hard time getting all these calories because mm -hmm. we've we sped your metabolism up. That way. Then I'd say, okay, cool. Don't worry about it. Then now I just want you to eat when you when you feel like it. When you're hungry, eat. Right. Stay, stay course with the types of foods that we've been eating. You naturally shave down. And you naturally come down. Another point to make too, okay? When, when, we are, when we do shift gears to decide that we're going to cut and reduce body fat, Feeling hungry is a very normal thing. It's mm. okay. That's that's a normal. That this is going to happen when yes. you're when you are deciding you're going to lean out. You're going to be in a caloric deficit for days. Okay, you're going to be hungry. You mm -hmm. and and that's part of this is getting comfortable and, and with that. A lot of times you have hunger and this craving thing hitting at the same time, and there and it's like this overwhelming feeling of like, oh, I'm craving and I'm hungry. Mm -hmm. yeah. And many times mm -hmm. when you just discipline yourself or go have a glass of water or go move, go for a walk for a little bit, it subsides and it passes a little bit and it's not so bad anymore. So yeah. you got to learn to get comfortable with that feeling too. Now, I only want you getting comfortable with that feeling when you're at a very healthy place calorie wise. Mm -hmm. If you come to me and you go, Adam, I'm really hungry. And I go, well, how many calories are you eating? Oh, I'm only eating 700 a day. Okay, well, that's not a, that's not a sustainable right. place for you to be. Right. But if you tell me, man, I've had 2,300 calories, Adam, and I'm still hungry, that's okay. We're in a cut phase right now. It's totally normal. That's such a good point. Like, uh, especially too, to be in a healthy place. Cause I, you know, th this is where I found a lot of benefit in deciphering between the two of having a craving versus hunger. And that was like to be, to refrain for like 24 hours and like, you know, do a fast where I could like really see where my tendencies lied in terms of like, I would go someplace just because it was ritual or, you know, I would, I would have these things kind of pop up and these feelings pop up, but uh, a lot of times it was cravings. And then you can kind of like, you know, 
get through that and struggle through that. But to, to learn that about yourself and like when you actually really are hungry, uh, you know, a lot of times it, it's only going to happen when you're in a healthy place where you can build yourself up to that point where, you know, I, I eat good amount of food and I'm, I'm, I'm actually putting the work in too, which you, you, you feel that it's, it's supplying, you know, that demand. I've also heard somebody describe, and I wish I remember who described this, that they, they're going to say, they said it probably way better than I'm going to say it right now, but there's a point where your body switches systems, right? So it goes from utilizing sugar as its primary source of fuel, glucose, right? So it, it, it's it's if you're always being fueled and you're eating all the time and you're over consuming, it's going to use food. That's its main source of fuel. But if you're in a caloric deficit for a, a consistent period of time, the body then shifts over and then will start to metabolize fat. And that shifting over feeling sometimes creates that feeling of, oh, I'm hungry. That's the body transitioning. So I used to tell clients like, listen, here's what's really cool. Okay. And this, and help, let this help motivate you when you're sitting on the couch at seven o'clock at night and you kind of feel hungry that all of a sudden you feeling that, and you know, you ate mm -hmm. that way all day. That's your body switching over now and is starting to metabolize fat. And if you can just discipline yourself not to go run to the core, the, the cupboards and go, you know, pop a bunch of popcorn or eat a bunch of snacks, because as soon as you do that, now the body switches over and it's going to use that as fuel. But at that moment, you're sitting watching TV and your body's burning fat. You're not exercising you're not lifting weights, you're just chilling and you're burning body fat. But the moment you go over and you start to consume calories, then the body switches back over and is now going to use that food, that food as fuel. Right. Mm. Now, you, you, you know, you, we all been mentioning cravings, right? So here's a, a good way to discern craving versus hunger, right? So let's say you're going to go eat lunch and your friend says, hey, would, would you like to eat? And you're like, I don't know. And they say, uh, do you want Mexican food? And you go, ah. Eh. I'm not in the mood for Mexican food. Well, what about, you know, Chinese? Uh, I'm not in the mood for Chinese. You know what I really would like? I really would like, you know, this thing. You know, that's what I'm into right now, right? That's a craving, right? So true. Yeah. Hunger is... Everything sounds hungry, good. Yeah, you just want to eat. Yeah. yeah. Give me whatever it is. Yeah, so long as it's not repulsive. Like, yeah. hunger, like, I don't really care where we go. I'm just hungry. I'd like to eat some food, so let's... Which, let's by the way, food. you'll notice that when you get to that point where you're truly hungry and you eat something, it's... It's it's all good. Yes, you're satisfied right Absolutely. away from it. Absolutely. Because everything tastes better, too. Now, now, back to you. Earlier, uh, Adam, you said clients would tell you, you know, you want to get to the point where they're like, I can't eat anymore. And someone listening might be like, oh, That'll never happen to me. Okay. <laughs> One caveat is the foods that you're eating, right? If they're unprocessed whole natural foods, then what Adam says will happen. If they're heavily processed foods, that might not happen because heavily processed foods are engineered That's right. to make you eat more. So you might think to yourself like 3,000 calories a day, I could easily do that. And you're thinking uh, French fries and potato yeah. chips and right. you know uh, pizza. And, well, yeah, now it's easy because you're eating foods that are hyper palatable, that are literally designed to make you overeat. But if you mm. stick to whole natural foods, especially if your diet is high in protein, you will hit that point, especially with the protein. Like uh, mm -hmm. that is, I heard that on the regular from clients when they're like, I can't eat 130 grams of protein a day. I'm like stuffed. Like there's no way I could do that. But if I let them eat, you know, or if they ate yeah, heavily processed foods, candy, yeah, right? and then they're going to be able to hit those calories and then some, no problem.